Hello, hello, hello. My name is Sam. I work at Golden Voice for Coachella. And today I want to talk a little bit about some basic principles around music and music events and how I think that immersive technology should support those principles. I tend to think very deeply about these things. and I like to start from the very beginning, so bear with me. Ever since uh, the beginning of human history, there's been music. Anthropologists think that music very likely predates the emergence of language itself and that it likely inspired and definitely soundtracked the first real social gatherings. It's always truly been what makes the people come together. <clears throat> For about 99% of human history, music has been a visual, social, and emotional experience. When people wanted to listen to music, they got together, and they played instruments for each other, and they sang together, and they danced together. And it's only within the past 75 years or so that music has become, with the advent and popularity of recorded music, that it's become audio only and solitary and a passive experience. So in a way, live events are really a return to form, and it's really the way that music is meant to be experienced. Whether my colleagues know it or not, everything that we do at Coachella is designed to augment a person's three-day weekend in the desert as much as we possibly can. We spend insane amounts of energy trying to excite and amaze and inspire the 250,000 people that attend each year. My job as the digital innovation manager is to explore new technology spaces and figure out how we can apply those technologies to the festival experience for fans and brands. Without a doubt, the area I'm most excited to work in is immersive technology. At, so festivals are visual experiences, and this goes without say, but I think what um, is less clear is the fact that we spend millions of dollars and hundreds of thousands of man hours on enabling artists to create visual experiences for their shows. Uh, we are designing the stages, we are building the stages, we are uh, transporting the artists once they arrive, we are packing all of their lighting gear and their stage productions onto the stage for them to play, and then packing it off the stage and sending it home when they're done, all with about 20 to 30 minutes of time in between each artist's show. The scale is actually really impressive. And I think that when planning immersive technology experiences at these shows, we should not only be thinking about how we are affecting the attendees visually, but also how we're affecting and reaching the attendees' followers. So how are we not only creating something that they want to take a picture of, but also something that they want to post a picture of? Because at the end of the day, at a festival like Coachella, there are literally hundreds of objects and activities that are extremely visually exciting around them at any given time. So the competition for people's social content space is definitely there. Uh, this year we worked with a company called Portals XR and we equipped a music festival stage with AR for the first time. So the stage we chose is called the Sahara Tent and it's where we book a lot of the hip hop and EDM acts. It's definitely the most like visually impactive stage of the festival. And what the Portals XR team did was they ingested um, some 3D renders on the stage from our stage design vendor, and then they created a virtual replica of that stage and designed some space-themed AR content. So as a user, when you walked into the festival stage in between a changeover, which is the time in between artist sets, you could pull out your phone, and we used the screens on stage as a marker. And based on where you scan the screens, certain content would appear anchored to a specific position. So some of that content was universal, and it existed in the same place for all users, regardless of where you were looking at it. And then some of that content was local. It was duplicated and existed above the heads of users and was kind of like a content capture opportunity. Um, so the content came in three, three phases. The first was planetary objects. There was a central sun around which a lot of the planets orbited, and there was some meteors and asteroids that kind of existed above the heads of each user. Um, the second piece was some man-made objects. Uh, there was like a life-size spaceship that came out from the center of the stage and then flew throughout the middle of the stage. There was a, 
uh, space station, a satellite, and in the beginning of that frame you saw an astronaut, which was actually a 3D rendering, an animation of an on-site art installation called Overview Effect by a company called Poetic Kinetics. The third piece was another rendering and animation of an on-site art installation called HIPPO, which stood for Hazardous Interplanetary Object. There was, as you can tell, a lot of space themes around Coachella this year. Um, this consisted of a bunch of people dressed as astronaut hippos creating a spaceship that you can see is very di kind of discombobulated and disjointed. And so we animated it flying around the festival tent, crashing into things and just generally making a mess. So we learned a lot at this, uh, during this activation this year. The first thing that I want to touch on was friction is bad and so in that sense, markers are bad. I think friction being bad is something that many of you inherently know, uh, but in the context of a mu music festival, it's even more so. Music festivals, especially Coachella, are the most distracting environments on planet Earth. At any given time, there are seven stages with artists playing, sponsorship activations, some of Los Angeles' best restaurants, um, friends to meet up with, et cetera, et cetera. So any additional uh, step to get a user from point A to point B results in an even greater decrease in user adoption. The second was around education. We did a survey of about 300 people on site and found out that about 50% of them don't even really know what AR is. So that's actually a 100% improvement from last year, but still goes to show that um, a lot of people just aren't in the known. Keep in mind this is like general population, average age 22 to 23. Um, so, although these experiences are definitely expensive to produce on site, we still need to spend time and resources on educating people as to what's actually happening. The third was distribution. We have been producing and distributing all of our AR experiences for the past few years through the Coachella camera, which is a feature in our Coachella app. We've been doing this mostly because we have about 90% adoption on site, which is really great, um, and also because we just didn't really have any other choice. Now that the social platforms are allowing brands to create more customized experiences on their platforms, probably time that we start asking ourselves if we're trying to reinvent the wheel and if we should be meeting users where they're at. So without a doubt, the grand vision for me at the festival is enabling artists to create XR content and integrate that into their performances. This is a really tough problem to solve and a multi-step process to get there. Um, and I think the first step towards getting there is figuring out the workflows around our stages. Reason why is because producing this at a music festival is not like producing it inside a classroom. Granted, every activation has its challenges. Um, there's quite a few more at a music festival. We, have, we can't even start designing or finish designing this stage until around January 1st when the artists are announced. We can't start b building these stages until about April 1st, which is only two weeks before the show. We have hundreds of staff and stage managers who are pretty set in their ways and don't necessarily want to add another thing to their to-do list, especially with a technology that they don't necessarily understand at all. And we have multiple levels of approval all the way to the top. I mean, we have, uh, when our Portals XR was on site trying to calibrate the experience, there's cranes and people in hard hats and um, everybody trying to interrupt them. The list goes on and on. Um, so that's why I think it took about a whole year for us to kind of figure that out. The second step is figuring out the content that we want to produce on these festival stages. So um, based on conversations with the vendor and the fans on site, I think that changeovers are a good place to do these things, changeovers being the time in between artist sets. There's a lot of time, usually about 20 to 30 minutes, so the artist beforehand can finish their show. The next artist has time to test their lights, and you can still do a pretty proper show in between. Um, it is also gives us an opportunity to start working with other brands and collaborating with graphic design artists for these shows and eventually collaborating with performing artists. Which even for a festival like Coachella um, is very, very hard to do. So what we need to do is figure out how we can enable artists to introduce, introduce a new type of technology to their performances. and. Um, you know, help them create or help, we need to create a pipeline that allows them to fit all of this into their pre-show performance. So before we go into the um, social side of things, I want to show you a video. It's a little bit long. 
and it has some swear words, so if you're 13 years old, it's probably time to leave. Um, and, but it's definitely the best piece of content that I think we've ever made at, at Golden Voice. Um, and it definitely dives into the social and human aspect of these shows. It's an annual event that brings together almost 200,000 people. And believe me, it's also a fine example of California's goal. <laughs> significant and one of the most eagerly anticipated festivals of its kind, not only in California, but literally all over the world. Where do all of these thousands, tens of thousands of people who come to this festival, where do they stay? Sit down. Sit down. Bitch, sit down, little bitch. What, uh, today, what are we watching? Dylan Francis. Yeah, I was gonna say. Big gigantic. Yes. I'm so pumped. There's just so many conflicts. I'm getting stressed out. Oh, wonder Banks and Pantogram, then the X. I won't see Father John Missy, but I'm okay with that. That's gonna be packed. It just takes time. And you can call up. No doubt about it. We're going to be front row. You're going to see We're us. We're going to wait all day. Uh -huh. All day. <laughs> the heart of Coachella is the music and the art, especially the music. And without music, you know, would any of us be here? It's a different energy to see. So this year seems really turned, and everybody seems excited about the future artists, you know? When I came to proposing, there was just no other option. There's no feeling on this planet seeing her enjoy my favorite thing as her favorite thing in our favorite place. Like, yeah, it was the <laughs> you know, music, it's the great equalizer. You don't have to be hip. You don't have to be beautiful, thin, anything like that. Music is music. It brings everybody together. different because it would have been our first year together. He was my baby cousin. Me and my sister would always be showing him music. The phone call, I remember I just started crying immediately and like, this was gonna be our year. I decided like, I'm gonna light candles for him, do everything like for him. This Coachella is really for him. Explain to someone, especially what Coachella means, that you say, hey, it's a music festival, but it's so much more than that. It kind of changes your life. You learn that people can be happy, and things don't really need to bother you as much. You kind of go with the flow. There's going to be a struggle every once in a while, but you make the most of it. And at the end of the day, all of that struggle and creates this unique experience that you'll never get the rest of your life, but you get to enjoy it once, or maybe a few times if you're lucky. But uh, you, you start talking about these sunsets and these mountains, show me a picture, and it'll flash back memories for a lifetime.
So festivals are social experiences. Whether you go at it alone or you go with a big group of people, there are countless different types of people from all different walks of life and all different backgrounds, and it's really a melting pot of, of different ideas. Um, in fact, for me, it's the social side of things that is the most rewarding. I'm one of those people that thinks people are the currency of life and that relationships are everything. Um, there's a festival that I produce that's happening next weekend called Splash House. It happens in Palm Springs twice a year, and we only sell about 15,000 tickets, but I have lost count of how many people have met there and gotten married. We will post uh, content on our socials asking people to recount stories of friends that they've met, and we get hundreds of them. And so for a festival like Coachella, I can't even imagine how many there must be, probably tens of thousands of each weekend. I think the network is really incredible, the network effect is really incredible, and I think that the ability to build new relationships and strengthen existing ones is what keeps people coming back year after year. So, even in the context of an event that is already social in nature, we should be thinking about how immersive technology can bring people closer together. Obviously, uh, collaborative features incur additional costs, but if we can think about what we can do this year and the year after that in order to set ourselves up for more social success further down the line, we should be doing that. The device is definitely never going away, and so how do we use it to bring people together as opposed to isolating them? This year, we introduced a feature, a wayfinding feature to the application for the first time. Most of you are probably very familiar with this. For those of you who are not, it's just a view of the camera. There's some categories at the very bottom from which you can choose to view various different points of interest. Uh, this was the first time that a utility AR feature was a notable improvement on the 2D alternative, which in this case was festival maps and probably have not been updated since like 1999 when the festival started. I'm not totally convinced that utilitarian AR features are going to really move the needle in the context of events, but as long as it's an improvement and it's, not, and it's inexpensive enough to not break the bank, I definitely think it's worth a shot. If you've been to a music festival before, you know how hard it can be to meet up with people, especially at night. I can't tell you how many times I've walked into a festival tent, trying to meet up with a friend, asking them, hey man, where are you? Oh, I'm on the right side of the tent. Are you on the right if you're facing the stage, if you're facing away from the stage? I'm um, facing away from the stage. Wait, maybe on the left. I'm next to the guy with bunny ears. When there's like 27 guys with bunny ears, it's no wonder that nobody can find each other. So I've been pitched on friend finding features probably about 20 times since I've been at Coachella, no lie. And a lot of good strategies in concept, and it's the, definitely the most requested fan feature. However, where a lot of them fail is in consideration of the fact that we have a very big problem with connectivity on site at festivals. With such a high density of people, uh, our free Wi-Fi networks struggle to maintain a signal after a certain time, let alone our cell phone towers. So we are constantly investing in infrastructure to improve this, but until we get there, um, I think we need to start helping people find their friends in real life. Um, I think the solution lies in looking at what people are already doing in the physical world, in the physical world, at a lot of festivals, you'll see people have totems. We don't allow them at Coachella for safety reasons, but a totem generally consists of a long pole that's usually decorated, and there's like an object or a sign on top. And so when people are trying to find their friends, they can scan the top of the crowd, they see the totem, and they know that their friends are right below it. I think the solution for friend finding until our infrastructure is more equipped to deal with the crowds lies in allowing people to create digital totems through the wayfinding feature. They can do that with this with a group. They set various totems on site at certain t stages, and because these totems only need GPS to be located once, uh, they don't necessarily need to be updated over the course of the weekend. As we build a better AR cloud or festival-wide AR environment, we can allow people to upgrade or update these totems over the course of the weekend, and then maybe eventually each individual will have a marker over themselves for friends who want to find them. Looking forward, social features have become a lot more expansive. Um, a lot of things that we're working on now, and one of the ones I wanted to touch on was avatars. Um, this year, for the first time, our social content team worked in, part, worked in conjunction with our partners at YouTube to bring Lil Michaela to the festival site. So the, for those of you who don't know, Lil Michaela is amongst the first, definitely, I would say, the most popular virtual influencer. She came on site and for the very first time spoke and interacted with people on live video as a part of our YouTube live stream. 
You can see in the top left, she interviewed Jay Balvin, who was um, one of the big artists who played the show this year. And then she kind of just pranced around and took pictures with other celebrities and artists and kind of had herself a Coachella weekend. So it's no secret that brands will be using avatars to interface with their customers. Um, and this is definitely something that we're looking to do as well. But I think we want to take it even one step further than just customer service requests and start looking at how we can bring these avatars on site to interact with people. You know, maybe they are recommending music based on uh, their Spotify listening history or recommending a food vendor to eat if they have a gluten allergy. Um, looking even further into the future, there'll be virtual and physical versions of Coachella from which fans can interact with each other using their avatars or even scanned versions of their real faces. Um, maybe even in the far future, fans who are at home can tether themselves to their friends who are at the festival, view the festival through their headset cameras or other wearable cameras and appear to those friends as avatars with them on site. I think as we start to Look further and further in the future, the lines between um, physical and virtual presence will blur and it gets very interesting. So before we jump into uh, the last part of this, I want to show you one more video. It briefly um, touches on a few of the art installations we had on site this year. One is called Spectra. It's a multi-story, multi-colored walk-in structure that they beat in 2018. And the other is a, um, an art installation called Sorale K by an artist named Francis Carre out of Burkina Faso in Africa. You know, the, the tower was always something that I was keen to do, being that the festival site is so flat, and to kind of move people to height in a different way. You know, they're used to running around from stage to stage at Coachella and trying to see everything. I'm hoping when they go up through there, it kind of slows them down, and they're like, wow, the site looks totally different from up here. What we're trying to also do with those colors is capture that sunrise and sunset. And it's amazing just putting a, like a, a colored film inside your vision can totally change how something looks. So to have that when we got three meter tall panels, that color shift will be different everywhere you are on the site. So hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll be able to see it in a lot of different kind of moves and textures. And once you're in the structure, there'll be no clear glass view. Everything will be a, a gradient on, on one color spectrum. Paul. This is the tree I've been talking about. That is the inspiration we I got for our Coachella project. Coachella, a very exciting project. But for the design itself, you know, I was thinking, what can I do? Coachella means celebration. Coachella means inclusion, a great gathering. And then I thought back about my village, a baobab tree that you can see from far, you know, so that the people, when they approach, this year Coachella festival, they say of beacon of light. You feel uh, I am getting ready to a great celebration. So festivals are emotional experiences and I think this is where we tie it all together because anything visual or social will spark emotion but when you start to weave together uh, visual and social into like a narrative or a cohesive storyline, you can really start to direct and enhance people's emotional reactions. And, um, you know, we, we humans, we love stories. And as a festival producer, we just want people to walk away feeling inspired and connected and renewed and definitely a little exhausted. Um, and we have the opportunity to create those emotional reactions through stories. As you can see from the video, there's a lot more than to our art installations than meets the eye and definitely a lot more than meets an Instagram photo. We started to tell those stories in 2018 with a feature in the Coachella camera that allowed a user to stand in front of an art installation and see various informational overlays that told the story of that art piece. We also had an easel on site that could be scanned in order to activate this uh, multi-story AR art piece. Uh, we weren't really stalling for occlusion or persistence or any of the things that really matter back then, so uh, the experience was novel but not all that impressive. Looking forward, we want to scan these art installations and create meshes for them so that we can create AR installations and activations that surround these pieces and are um, in in interwoven in between them to start telling the story of um, the artists and the communities behind them. And then looking further into the future, we'll want to look back on what has already worked in the past. In 2015, Poetic Kinetics, the same company that did the Astronaut, 
did this piece called Caterpillar's Longing. And it was this gigantic caterpillar that over the course of the weekend turned into a gigantic butterfly. And it's told a story of like trans transformation and renewal, which is something very important to people who attend these festivals. Um, and so at some point, we'll be creating larger than life AR stories that take place over the course of the whole weekend and span the entire festival site and involve multiple different departments and activities and allow people to collaborate and interact with them in real time. Once again, I think blurring the lines between um, what is physical and what is virtual at the festival and telling stories in the process. So running out of time, so I'm going to wrap up. Um, hopefully some of the stuff that I've talked about will help people who are producing events think about how we can create things that serve purpose as opposed to just being sparkly. And if you do work in an event or for an event and want to repurpose some of these ideas for your own, I totally support it. Coachella is in a unique position to be able to experiment and learn. And the more that we can share learnings with each other, the better off we'll all be. Thank you.